Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I prayed this morning and I asked God to give me confirmation on the words that I will share as on Catherine's grandniece. And I have to tell you that I'm really emotional today because I feel like I lost a grandmother. For those of you who don't know me, on the program it says Shawnee Bindu, but if you ever have been around me with Aunt Catherine, she didn't call me that, she called me Boom. So if you've ever heard of Boom, that, that's me. I come from a family of strong women, and Aunt Catherine was definitely that. My grandmother, Emma, she passed when I was only two years old. So I don't have many memories of her. But my grandmother left me with two sisters, Louise and Catherine. And I had the privilege of being very close to both of them. One thing they both had in common was they paid attention to detail. Whether it was watching me while my mom worked or washing my clothes or ironing them or cooking, well, that was mostly on Louise because I'm thrilled and I couldn't do like that. Mm. They taught me the value to be neat. I was very quiet. And as you heard my mother say, my aunt cat loved to be. So why would she eat me? Well, she beat me because I didn't pay attention to details. She was no nonsense. She meant what she said, and she said what she meant. Being neat was my struggle. But if nothing else, she was going to teach me the value of being neat. So I want to just leave you with three things that she taught me that I will hold dear to myself forever. One is presentation. Pay attention to details. She was a proverbial woman. I didn't understand why she would beat me for being a kid and getting dirty at school. But what she taught me in essence was how you present yourself is how other people will perceive you. When my aunt Kat walked into a room, everybody paid attention to her. She was neat. She was beautiful. She was gorgeous. I don't know if Mimi remembers this. Jaquel will definitely, because we talked about it. But being in her, in her house, I remember sitting in between her legs, and my aunt Kat would do our hair. Our parts were so neat. Our ponytails were so neat. And then she would release us to go outside and play. But she would say to us before we walked out the door, you better not mess up her hair. <laughs> and we did it. She taught me the value of arts. I'm talking about performing arts. And she taught me the value of discipline. I'm not sure if Michael knows this or if Mimi knew this, but it was because of them that I learned to dance. It is because of them that I went off to college and I have a degree in musical theater. Because of them, because my aunt had poured into her grandchildren, and this is the type of woman she was. She didn't only want to give it to them, but she gave it to others. Because of that, I now can give it to my daughter. She taught me to love your husband and to love your family. Again, my grandfather passed when I was four. So I didn't have my grandfather around. But my grandfather was my aunt Kat's husband's brother. And to watch how she loved her bug was just, it's something I can't even describe. She talked so rough sometimes, but when Uncle Bubba walked into the room, it was, Bubba. <laughs> and sometimes I think, when I get my husband, I nicknamed him Bub because I just love the way she sang his name. She taught me to love my family, to honor my elders. When you walk into a room, you just don't walk into the room, but that you speak to the people that are there. She would get on me about not calling her. 
And if anybody ever talked to her and said, boom, she said, boom, don't call me. <laughs> but I got a chance to speak to her prior to her transition. She laughed, she joked, and as I was going to get my keys, because I was a chubby kid, as a little kid as well, she said, I know what you over there doing. I said, what, what am I doing, that cat? And, she, and you over there getting my cookies. <laughs> and I said, the whole guy. And she said, I'm just playing with you. She was a jokester. Lastly, she taught me to fear the Lord. That is something that I hold dear to me because that wasn't something just that my mother taught me, but that was something that my Aunt Catherine taught me, my Aunt Louise taught me. And I'm sure if my grandmother had a chance, she would have taught me. And so I thought of a scripture that would embody her, and that was Psalm 31. This was the first scripture that I learned as a child, and it was, who can find a virtuous woman for her practice for our love movies? My Aunt Kat was a virtuous woman. She, it says, charm is deceptive, excuse me, and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. I, Catherine, I can't thank you enough. I'm forever indebted to you for the lessons that you have given to me, the sacrifices that you have done for not just my family, but for so many people that are connected here. I am grateful that you love me. You love me loudly. You taught me to be confident, to be me. I'm still working, but when I go out and I step, I know how to present myself, and that is because of you, and I am so grateful. Thank you to your family, your children, and your grandchildren. Thank you for allowing her to be shared with me and my, my cousins and my brother, because I am a better as well. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Talia is not here today, but she has given some strict instructions. Jaquel and Talia have told me that we're going to open the floor now for reflections. There's only going to be three reflections. And I'm going to ask that you adhere to it. It's difficult to talk about all that people, my Catherine has done for you in two minutes. So if you, if you don't think you're doing what you need to do, anybody going to cut you off. But at this time, the floor is open for reflections. Amen. And if there are two others, if you can get ready to start over to the mic. Thank you. May the works I've done speak for me. Amen. Uh, I know Catherine as Jubilee. And for years, I thought she was blood relevant. She, uh, she grew up with my Aunt Pansy and my oldest sister, Rebecca. And uh, just like they said, Jubilu was always on the scene. Now, she didn't cook. <laughs> but rest assured, if something was going on, she was going to make sure that food was there. And I'm reminded that, and here's why I thought she was, uh, was I don't know if she was my aunt and sister. I know she wasn't. My oldest, she wasn't our sister, but she grew up with my sister Rebecca Mingo. And uh, she would come and tell us things that happened when they were a kid. I don't know if you all remember, maybe her oldest daughter, a Lulu may remember. She talked about Miss Susie. <laughs> and, and as I said, Jigaloo was a type of person, if she was left in charge of the children. When we would be going to the Sunday school convention down in Perrine or Homestead, she was to be the one if somebody had a character, she was going to take them. And she always had food. Those 
those of you that are old enough had food in the trunk. Yeah, remember? And she was the life of the party. As to say, she always had humans. And as sitting down as a child, I wanted to know, well, why did you all, uh, she was telling the story about Miss Susie, and she would say, we would get a beat. And I said, well, why? I'm saying to myself, why did you all go and make the ice cream and then tell Miss Susie about it, knowing that Miss Susie was going to tell y'all mama and y'all was going to get a beat? She said, I don't know. <laughs> but we did. And all of my older sisters, I'm the youngest of 12, and we all grew up, like I say, on 44th Street. And Julia was a caring, loving, giving person. And I thank God for her. It would have been robbery for me not to say something because I've known Julia all my life. Very much, man. She's an accomplished artist who does beautiful work. Very, very proud of her. God has been good. He's been good to us. Aunt Cap was the last of her generation on both sides, the Jones and the Gary side. And so today, as we celebrate her life, we're starting on a new era. It's a new era for us. 
And my prayer is that we would honor their memory by being our better selves, by loving family and keeping us together, remembering those barbecues that we used to have in the yard and those times that we went as a whole family, everybody, down to the beach. And remembering them in different ways because now, with 2020, life has changed. And for us, life has changed again. But we have this hope, not as those who do not believe, but we have this hope that God is in control. He knows what we need. He knows when we need it. He will bring that word when that word is required. At this time, we're gonna have a song from the songbird who has blessed us already. Andrea Jordan, if you would please.
and we can feel the comfort and the assurance that God's everlasting love brings to heal our hearts. Pray God's peace and comfort for you in your loss. We love you, but God is the best. Sincerely, Demetrius Wilson and family. The late Catherine Jones, sending our love, prayers, and sympathy from Los Angeles. Love always. Stephen, Dana, and Lisa. For Aunt Catherine, her children, grandchildren, great grandchildren. Of your beloved sister, Dana, uh, Norma, Emma, and Charlie Jones. We love you. Rest in heaven, our Catherine, love always. Your niece Stephanie, Gary, Glenn. This is sent with love and sympathy from the house of God, Church at Brownsville State, Elder Victor, Carter, Pastor, and Congregation. And with all the love that this family can have for their loved ones, simply say, God, we thank you for the time that you have allowed us to share with our loved ones. We've had good days, hills to climb, weary days, and sleepless nights. But God, when we look around and we think things over, we realize that all of our good days have outweighed our bad days, and we won't complain. Today, another chapter has been completed. Another page has been turned. A life has been well lived. And now, this rest is well earned. There's a song that says, I've got a new home. Oh, it's our love. And it's mine, mine, all mine. I've got a new home. Oh, it's our love. And it's mine. Today. 
Amen. We hope to do her justice and do this service justice. Amen. But I'd like to sing a song, Brother Lord. Amen. I have to wait till they give me my right key. I'm a message from the Lord. Hallelujah. A message unto you. Mother Jones taught him how to pop. 
but they had to be neat. Presentation is everything. Yes, she did. I remember that. Mother Jones started coming back to church a few years ago, coming back to our ministry. Amen. One thing about it, she said what she meant, and she meant what she said. And you all know I'm telling the truth. Amen. If she felt a certain way, she just don't speak it, and that's the end of it. She couldn't change her mind. But I would visit her when she moved in with, I would visit her at Sister Lula's house. And then when she moved in with Sister Jaquel and Sister Tabby, I would go over and visit with her. And then in, in, in um, February, we had a Valentine dinner here. And Mother didn't feel like eating, but she came and visited, and, you know, came to the service and sat in the dining room and ate. And Mother would 